Chapter Five of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Five, in which the reader obtains a glimpse of Claude and Kate at home. Mr. Grace was under the impression, therefore, that Claude created trouble at home, as he did in the classroom. Mr. Grace was mistaken. Indeed, it is sometimes very difficult to judge of a boy's home life by his conduct at school. The quiet, nice boy at school, in whose mouth butter is not supposed to melt, makes up, it may be, for his good conduct on more familiar ground. He gives his younger brother and sisters no rest, and causes the servants of the house untold miseries. His parents wonder, when they receive his school report, and learn that he is a model boy. They try to believe it, too. The harem scarum of the classroom goes home, and once he has crossed the threshold, becomes a lamb. He runs errands for his mother, plays with his little sister, and when evening comes, buries himself in a tale of adventure. There is such a thing as the law of compensation. Claude's home life was almost ideal. Let us follow him for one afternoon and evening. On entering the house, his first care was to salute his mother, a delicate lady whose faded face gave more than a hint of the beauty that had once been hers. She had been an invalid for some years, and not without a fond mother's regret, had entrusted Claude to Kate's care. Thus Kate, at the age of fourteen, had become Claude's little mother. Mrs. Lightfoot's pale cheek flushed as Claude came tripping in, and without giving her time to rise from the sofa, kissed her heartily three distinct times. Then, putting his arm around her neck, Claude ran through his second day's adventure at school. No wonder he was animated in his narrative. The fond eyes that looked into his would have inspired the most sluggish of tongues. Before he had completed his account, Kate, having changed her school dress for what she called her playing gown, entered bright and rosy and taking her place on the other side of mamma and with her arm about mamma's neck the three chatted on unrestrainedly for some minutes there was much love there were no secrets well claude said kate after a glance at her watch we mustn't stay too long with mamma or the doctor will keep us out entirely come on now for our game of lawn tennis taking an affectionate farewell brother and sister hurried away kate to secure the rackets and claude whose appetite was perennial to coax the cook into giving him a few cakes kate in her white playing gown moved about with an ease and freedom surprising in a girl and played a game which few boys of her age could surpass but claude was a master he skipped about with a never-failing command of his motions and handled his racket equally well with right or left hand in each game he gave kate thirty to begin on and even thus handicapped won the set after a long contest it was a pretty sight these two bright-eyed rose-flushed children as they moved about with never-failing agility and grace while their laughter unrestrained yet not harsh rippled into music on the soft evening breeze claude and kate when there were other players at hand always played as partners and they had yet to taste defeat after the match the brother retired to the bathroom to enjoy his daily splash this child of light and air had learned very early in life to love the cooling waters and not without some natural repugnance had become reconciled to the lavish use of soap claude's reappearance from the bathroom was the signal for supper mr lightfoot who had arrived from his law office toward the close of the lawn tennis set presided he was a hearty gentleman on this side of the prime of life kind and considerate toward his children and tender to his invalid wife he had one hobby and that was an offshoot of his patriotism on arriving in the states he had been taken up with the american people and with american institutions this was very natural and as it should be but mr lightfoot made his americanism a convenient peg to hang his prejudices upon whatever suited his whims he styled 
American. Whatever ran counter to them was un-American. The stars and stripes entered largely into his conversation, and some of his Milwaukee friends tell a story of his refusing to allow in his house a picture of Columbus taking possession of the newly found country, because the standard represented in the scene was not the American flag. The story, of course, was made up, but it shows how Mr. Lightfoot was regarded by his American friends. Mr. Lightfoot had taken it into his head that the public schools were an American institution. In the matter of parochial and Catholic schools, he was rather difficult, and it was only after long overtures and much diplomacy and constant tact that mrs lightfoot had succeeded in persuading him to allow claude to go to milwaukee college there had been no trouble however concerning kate's going to the convent school with all his prejudices mr lightfoot could not bring himself to send kate to an institution where the co-educational system obtained during supper mr lightfoot questioned claude closely was there an american flag in your classroom claude i didn't notice sir didn't you see any american flags at school no papa and did you hear any of the professors talking about our government no sir they asked me how i could jump and they made me jump for them till i was tired and one of them gave me an orange he's a nice man mr lightfoot went on with his questions but failed to discover that the faculty was an enemy of our government or that the teachers were opposed to republican institutions but he was not satisfied it was twilight when they arose from supper and claude followed by kate went to his room to prepare his lessons for the following day the method of these two was certainly unique kate opened the latin grammar and claude his pocket-knife with which he at once began to whittle now said kate let's hear you repeat the first and second declensions which we learned yesterday whittling energetically claude not stopping to pause or think gave cases endings and genders without a single omission very good claude now listen in the third declension the genitive ends in ease the nominative has all sorts of endings example leo leonis leoni leonem leo leone kate paused apparently absorbed in his manual task claude repeated her words exactly as she had spoken them now for the plural leones leonum leonibus leones leones leonibus there was a twinkle in claude's eye as he began leonibus leones leonis leonibus leonum leonis oh claude where's your memory that was all wrong no it wasn't retorted claude yes it was you began with leonibus and the nominative is leonis kit i've caught you cried claude jumping to his feet and hopping about while brandishing his knife and the bit of wood i said it backward kate laughed and owned herself outwitted within five minutes the playful youth had mastered the third and fourth declensions saying them backward and forward with equal readiness from his first school days he had done nearly all his studying by listening his memory naturally good had become so sharpened by this exercise that he could repeat after one hearing any paragraph that kate pronounced the little romp was too impatient too restless too full of animal life to put himself down to hard study and his sister's help while cultivating his memory did not succeed in adequately developing his understanding here was another of claude's flaws he trusted to the nimbleness of his wits rather than to their labour and kate found it impossible to make her brother settle down to severe duty they next took up united states history and kate after reading a paragraph gravely listened to claude as one listens to a perfect echo before this lesson was quite disposed of claude betrayed signs of flagging attention his eyes grew heavy and he put his hands before his mouth several times to suppress a yawn 
like the birds of day claude grew quiet and sedate with the darkness all his animation went to rest with the dying of the twilight let's say prayers kit he said when he had stumbled through the last few lines of the history lesson i can get up my examples in the morning kneeling together upon the carpet the two recited the our father the hail mary and the acts of faith hope and charity the restless boy appeared now in quite another character with his hands folded and his eyes fixed on the crucifix above his bed his whole attitude showed faith and devotion while his sister looked like one of those sweet virgins whose lives are the glory of the church together had these two recited their prayers since the little lips were able to lisp in unison god bless papa and mamma they went on and make me a good boy said claude girl said kate lord have mercy on brother willie and all the suffering souls in purgatory lord make me a good boy continued claude alone and prepare my heart to make a good first communion then after adding a prayer to their mother mary for perfect purity of soul and body and making the sign of the cross both arose whereupon kate slipped out leaving claude alone fifteen minutes later laying aside her own text-book she crept softly in it was her habit to return every night and if claude were sleeping as was generally the case she kissed his upturned cheek and returned to her books if he were awake she would seat herself beside him and receive such confidences as claude had not the courage to tell her of in the glare of day then patting the little cheek or stroking the soft sunny hair she would soothe her brother into slumber and later in the night the invalid mother would enter claude knew nothing of this and falling upon her knees she would pray long and devoutly for her little darling and gazing into his face would think of that other little one who had been taken from her in the first flush of radiant childhood who dares say that a christian mother's grief for the loss of a little child is an unalloyed bitterness it lifts the mother's heart to another and brighter world and amid the heat and dust and grime of this life she carries about with her a remembrance which links her sympathies and her longings with the beautiful land beyond where the angel face of the departed shines down on her in unchangeable purity radiant joy and undying love End of chapter five